Hey gang, in this video, we're going to cover how to use the loop element in Salesforce flows to create multiple records at one time. So if you've never used the loop element before, there are a few things you should know first. First, it's available for all five flow types. So if you don't know what those types are, I'll link a video here. Next, a loop element requires a collection variable in order to function. And a collection variable is a variable in flow that can hold more than one record or more than one thing. In most cases, it'll be records for how you use it, but technically it could hold other types of data as well. When a collection is set in a loop element, it iterates or basically it processes each individual item at a single time. Iterate is the technical word in case you want to get into coding or do more research around loops. And for a loop element to work, there are two pieces that you have to set. You have to set what happens for each item in your loop, and you also have to set what happens after the last item exits your loop. So basically, what are you doing to each item that's within your collection? And then what are you doing once that collection stops processing? And conceptually, the way that this works is you have your loop element, you have your collection. So again, a collection holds more than one thing. It doesn't have to have more than one thing in it, but it's capable of holding more than one record or more than one data point. Once your collection is assigned to that loop element, each individual item in that collection gets processed. And this is your for each path. So this is where you set what happens within your flow for each individual item. After your actions have run, the flow will go back to your loop so that it can start iterating on the next item in your collection. And this process basically repeats itself until all of your collection items have iterated, at which point after your last item iterates, you have to decide what happens to your flow. So typically your flow will either end or you'll do something else like bulk update or bulk create a bunch of records from your loop. So in this example, let's say we want to create a task record for every open opportunity that isn't closed, but has a close date in the past month. We'll do this using a loop. Here I have my schedule triggered flow that runs daily at 3 a.m. when my instance is most likely to be relatively quiet. The first step in the flow checks if the current date or the flow run date is for the first of the month. This is based on my Boolean formula here, which returns true if the day of the month equals one at the time when the flow runs. If that Boolean return is true, then this next get records element will search for all of my org's open opportunities that are dated for the previous month. So here's what that looks like. That date last month value is actually a formula variable that calculates the first day of the previous month from the flow's current run date. And at the bottom, this is super important. I'm choosing for this element to store all records that possibly meet this criteria, not just the first record. This is the only way we'll be able to use our loop element for whatever this query returns. Now back to our requirement. For every opportunity record this element here finds, we want to create a single task that is assigned to the opportunity owner and alerts them to follow up on this deal. So to preview, we're going to add our loop element right down here. And then for each item in the loop, we'll prepare the task record using the assignment element. We'll use a second assignment element to add that record to a collection. And then we'll finally create all of those records and actually send them to the database. So first let's add my loop element. This element is the easiest to configure of them all. You just have to choose a collection variable in this case, all of the opportunities from my get records element, and then specify the order. In this case, the order doesn't really matter, so I'll hit done. Now that the loop is here, the next step beneath it is to determine what should happen for each item or opportunity record that's in the loop iteration. So going back to our visual, if this get records element finds four opportunities that match my criteria, then this loop element is iterating through each individual record in order to do something to it. We just need to define what that something is in this step. So like I said earlier, let's prepare the task record for each opportunity record that's in this loop. I'll create my assignment. And I'll use the record new task variable that I set up earlier to assign all of the values for the individual task. So 
So for this step, to meet my requirement, I need to assign this task to the person who owns the opportunity that's in the loop. So to do that, I'll start to type current item from loop, and I can already see that the current item that's in the loop iteration is selectable. So this would be the opportunity that's currently going through the loop. Hey, editing D here. I totally forgot to relate our opportunity record to the task, which is probably the most important part. So here's what that assignment element should have looked like. And the difference here is that last variable assignment where I'm assigning the related to field on the task to be the value of the opportunity ID for the current loop item. Okay, back to the video. Okay, so for each item in the loop, we're preparing that new task record by populating my task record variable. So once that record variable is populated, we want to put it to the side so that we can actually send it to the database later on. So I'll do another assignment element. And for this step, we basically want to take that record variable that we just populated in the previous assignment element and add it to a new collection where we will also add all of the other task records that we populate as we go through the loop. So let's create that record collection right now. So again, we're creating a record collection variable. And in order to make this a collection variable, we need to check this box, allow multiple values collection. So now our new record collection variable is here and we'll add the record new task variable that we just populated. So once you select it, you just backspace that period, click out. And like I said, we're adding our newly populated individual record to a record collection so that we can eventually send those records to Salesforce. So in terms of requirements, we've just about basically met them all using the loop, these two assignment elements, and our get records element from the start. Okay, so let's recap. For all the records that get found in this get records element, those records will enter this loop queue where each individual record will follow these steps. So a new task record will be prepared for that opportunity. And that new task record will be added to a task record collection where by the end of our loop, all of our opportunities will have generated individual tasks added into this collection. So the final step is to send those records to Salesforce. Let's use a create records element. In this case, we're creating multiple records because we're creating all of the records in our collection. And then we're selecting that collection variable here. Now, as a final step, let's test our flow to make sure that it works correctly. I'll hit the debug button. Always run in rollback mode, especially if it's the first time and especially if you're building in production, which is not recommended. And in this case, the flow is actually working exactly as it should. So today's the 27th. Remember, this element is checking if the flow run date is the first day of the month, which it is not. So this works. But for the sake of the video, I want that other path to run, so let's just temporarily set that decision element to false. Let's debug again. So in this case, my flow failed because the loop opportunities owner ID hasn't been set or assigned. So what does that mean? This assignment element is assigning the owner of the opportunity that's currently iterating through the loop. But the problem is that my get records element 
when I set which fields to save after it queried for those records, I didn't include the owner ID field. So now when we debug again, our flow runs fully and makes it all the way to the end. So let's look at what's happening. In a separate tab, I have all of my open opportunities with the close date in the last month. Remember, this was our criteria for our get records element to begin with. So here, our get records element has successfully found records and the loop is planning to iterate through four records and these are their record IDs. So presumably these four record IDs match the four opportunity records that I just showed you in my list view. And by the very end of the flow, when we get to the create task step, we're creating four different task records. So relatively trusting that this works, I'm going to debug it again, but I'm not going to run it in rollback mode because I want those task records to appear in Salesforce. So again, we've run everything, the interview's finished. If I go back to that list view and I open one of these deals, there you can see our task record that was created from the flow with all of the fields that we set in that assignment element within our loop, our related to field, which relates it to the opportunity, our status, our subject, and of course our owner, which was a big part of the requirement. So I hope this video was helpful in explaining how loops work and how you can use them to create multiple records at a single time. If this video was helpful, give it a thumbs up. And for more videos like this, be sure to subscribe. Thanks.